Hi, this is Rochelle with Scrap Craftastic. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to do another example of sticker storage. Um, this is not my original idea, and I'll mention that again later in the video, but I am using my printable pattern papers, and what I'm doing here is just cutting the papers down to the sizes that um, I was provided by the original creator, and I will include all of her information in the description box below, as well as probably later in the video. Um, but here, like I said, I'm just trimming down the papers. These are the papers that I printed um, that are available in my shop, and I printed them double-sided so that I did not have to worry about um, having double-sided scrapbook paper. This is a great way to have double-sided um, pattern papers on hand is printing them yourself. Because most of the paper pads that we buy, um, like from Michaels and Joanne has a pretty good supply of double-sided papers, but those, especially those hot buy papers from Michaels, they are not double-sided. So if you need double-sided paper, digital is a great option. Anyway, so I'm just trimming it up and getting the papers ready and so once that's done i'll start showing you how to actually make the sticker story i hope you enjoy so what i've done is cut the pieces that i will need for this sticker storage book i saw someone post theirs on instagram and i found out who originally came up with the idea and her name is kelly and you can Check her out on Instagram at Kells Plans, and I'll put the information on screen here, and I'll also include her information in the description box below. So this is not my original idea. I printed this on matte photo paper, but it's kind of like cardstock. Because it's photo paper, the colors come out much more rich and lush. I cut my papers at four and a half by six and three eighths for the front and the back pieces. Then the spine is two by six and three eighths. So this is what six and three eighths is if you, in case you're ruler challenged. <laughs> okay, so now what I need to do is put these in a laminate pouch. I'm already warming up my laminator. This is 5 mil laminate. Um, I'm sure you could use 3 mil and get just as good of, re of a result. I'm using double sided paper so that I don't have to use two pieces of paper glued together. And if you want to know more about using printed or digital papers I have a, a blog post on my website about it you can go check it out at scrapcraftastic.com and I'll also leave a link to that below as well as a link to the digital paper that I use for this so from what I understand you line this up in here and you leave a gap between each piece. Oh, I almost forgot. Important, important. Round the corners if you want your corners rounded. I'm good for laminating before I round corners. I've done that so many times with things. So I think I'm going to do a half an inch round on this. There we go. And this is the We Are Memory Keepers um, Cropodile Corner Chomper. It gives you the option of a one half inch corner and or a one quarter inch corner. So let's try this again. Put my pieces in here. And make sure everything is as straight as possible.
So if you're using stuff, uh, a paper or design that you specifically want on the front versus the back, keep in mind that what's on the right side will be the front of the book. Okay. The only thing I don't like about this is not being able to line everything up just perfectly. Okay. So now I've got everything lined up. I'm going to feed this through my laminator and hope nothing moves. Maybe I'll put a piece of chipboard underneath like I do sometimes. This is a piece of packaging to help keep everything level so that you have less moving movement of the pieces on the inside. And actually one of her tips was to train the folds as it comes out of the laminator but I have laminated it on the wrong side to be able to do that because I need my folds to go down instead of up so what I'll do is train it when I send it back through for the second time to make sure that everything is sealed I'll flip it over and train it because it'll still be hot then it's best if you're folding laminate to try to get that fold done while the uh, laminate is hot so really I would have been folding it this way but I needed to put my inside pattern up to do it and I'll just show you that real quick I mean it helps but I'm pretty sure you could get just as good of a result with using your bone folder to do it if it's still a little warm so here we go I'm gonna fold as it's coming out be careful not to burn yourself and fold again so now it's trained and I'm going to take my bone folder and help it out a little bit more again be careful not to burn yourself this laminate is hot and voila so once we trim it up it's going to stand up like that great idea when you slide it into your bookshelf this is the view you'll have you can label it however you like so let's go ahead and trim it up I don't think I'm gonna be able to use that's the only thing about doing that <laughs> you can't I don't think you can put it through your paper trimmer when you do it that way so I'll have to cut off the excess with scissors I don't want to use those scissors because they leave a little jagged edge okay so I'm gonna use these scissors to trim off the excess make sure you don't cut ooh, just stab myself make sure you don't cut into the bubble try to cut as straight as you can if you want to use the paper trimmer then I would not try the fold before as it comes out of the laminator It's just up to you. I'm, and like I said, I'm pretty sure you can get a nice crease with a bone folder. You can use the handle of your scissors to press it down however you like. Okay. I'm just not confident in my straight cutting with scissors. <laughs> so then I'm just going to take my corner chomper again and chomp these pointy corners off of the laminate then I need to punch my holes so that I can add the elastics that will actually hold the books in so let's do that um, She didn't really give a measurement for that and if you know me you know I like to measure everything <laughs> um, 
trying to decide which side I want to be the top. I think this way. So what I'm going to do is just kind of... I think you need to go down at least a quarter of an inch and probably come in a half an inch on each side. So I'm just going to take my ruler and do that. So I'm going to scooch down a quarter of an inch. And I'm going to mark it here and here. I think that's good. I might cut on the inside of those just to be sure. So a quarter of an inch is about right there. So I'm going to mark a half an inch here, half an inch here. Okay. So now I'm going to take, you can punch this with a quarter inch punch or a regular hole punch. I do happen to have an eighth of an inch punch which is smaller so I'm going to use that to punch my holes oops not quite in the right place on that one okay okay again I'm gonna go ahead and just use this gold cord that I have picked up from Joanne they also sell black and white I'm not sure if they have any other colors there but you should be able to find this type of cording at any um, fabric store so this is more is thinner I've had this uh, type of cord before and it was a little thicker because this is so thin I'm gonna double it so that I have double the amount normally if the cord is the width that you need it to be the size that you want then you would just do two lengths of your album since I want to double it I'm going to do four and I keep calling it an album it's a sticker album but it uses uh, the photo albums so when I say album I actually mean stickers a sticker book sticker storage like that so you're gonna feed this in through the hole from the inside back through this hole next to it at the top Also, if you're using a bigger hole punch and you have a thicker elastic cord, you could, um, let's just do one at a time. You could actually put more books, maybe, depending on how stuffed they, they get. So now... Put everything, make sure everything is pulled snugly. And I want to make sure these are even. I'm just going to tie a knot. It's done, so let's take our photo albums. And again, you can take the papers out. These are available in Walmart in a four pack for $2.97 and this is a good place again to use your digital paper and you can also use it to um, title each book I have one with functional stickers I have one with holiday stickers so it is nice to be able to see what you have on the cover of the book so let's put this one in here. And there you have it. So I'm going to take these empty books out and let you see what it looks like with the full books. Because the empty books, it seems like it hangs over the edge. Let's see how it looks with 
an actual full book in it. Okay, that's better. This is one of the ones from... Okay, this is one from Walmart. And this is one from Walmart. Pretty sure this is the one from Dollar Tree. Yeah. So. Okay, so let's try one more in here just to see how it looks. there you have it so you could just pop this on the shelf like so and have several of them together and divide it into sections I think I kind of like that okay so that is it that's how you make a uh, sticker storage that is built like a book or a mini album style if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you like videos like this, please click that subscribe button and the little bell so that you'll receive notifications each time I upload a new video. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.